So Paul, can you explain on the picture there how you, uh, where you went, what's your route? Well basically the Inca Trail, uh, as, as the Incas did hundreds of years ago, um, basically links and then culminates in, in the famous Sun Gate and, and Machu Picchu. So effectively you come through a trail that takes you through the Sacred Valley um, and then right across here and then down to a base camp and then you come all the way up to what is Dead Woman's Pass. And why is it called that? Um, well, they don't tell you until you get closer to it um, why it's called Dead Woman's Pass, but it becomes clearer the closer you get to the summit. Um, basically, the shape of the pass uh, is very much in the shape of a woman lying down, um, and you can see the, uh, the shape, a body shape of the woman from the top upwards, if you get my uh, drift. How did, uh, how did you feel about the whole track itself? I mean, were you nervous? Was there any moment when you thought, oh no, I've really bitten off more than I can chew here? Um, on probably more than one occasion that, uh, you know, you have these sort of moments where, because you have to do everything at your own pace, so at times, you know, you're, you're in front of people that you're trekking with and then suddenly you get second wind. So you spend a lot of the time on the mountain alone and, and you know 100 yards might seem not very far away but 100 yards at the wrong time in the wrong attitude can seem like a mile away um, so you have a lot of time with your own thoughts and yes there were times when you're thinking yeah definitely I've bitten off more than I could chew. So uh, where are we now? What's, what's this like? Um, this is uh, a dawn morning where we went to uh, um, a, basically a lake that had been made out of one of the floods from the jungle uh, 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 and basically you see an amazing amount of wildlife but uh, uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, pieces of wildlife that you'll see in the depths of this uh, uh, lake is uh, those famous uh, man-eating as they say piranhas um, and uh, we went and uh, um, saw them but we actually uh, some of our group actually managed to fish and we actually caught some live piranha uh, as well as seeing some of the largest uh, beavers you'll ever see in the world some of the six foot long beavers came and um, you know birds of you know ev every every description and, and and much more but the piranha um, you know, when you see them up close, you can you can see what people f are fearful of. Um, but I, I think perhaps the uh, the horror stories of man-eating piranhas is a little bit overstated. So, do you think the trip has changed you as a person? Um, I think the trip um, makes you reflect on what we do have um, and what others perhaps don't have, um, and how a simple life. Um, 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 can be, um, you know, a rewarding life, and you can see that in in the Peruvian people. They're very happy, happy people, even though they're very hardy people. Um, and then reflecting that back onto your own family and loved ones, and and seeing how you can help um, local people and sit and put smiles on the faces of, of local children um, through by doing simple things like going on a trip like this that are good good for your own soul and spirit but uh, hopefully do something to help others that that may be suffering in a different way. I know it was all for charity, how have you got on? How much money have you raised? Yeah well we, 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 we've not stopped the clock yet, um, those who, who, who now we're back, um, those who, who still want to give, you know you can go on our Just Giving um, site uh, and type in Paul Stannard um, or you can give to us direct but um, um, for basically Dave Lee's uh, children's charity and and de Melza. Um, but you know we're, we're up in the several thousand pounds mark and we hope to keep pushing it further. Thank you very much Paul. Thank you.